Okay, so let's take a look at fungi. So looking at fungi in general, we essentially have two groups of fungi. Uh, one are macroscopic fungi. Those are things that you can see like mushrooms, puffballs, gill fungus. Uh, the other is microscopic fungi. So these are the molds and yeast. Uh, most are unicellular uh, or colonial. A uh, few of these microscopic ones are multicellular. So let's look at uh, the cells of the microscopic fungi. So look at a yeast cell. Yeast cells are uh, kind of round to oval. Um, they're distinguished by their reproductive strategy. So what they do is they do budding. So you can see this bud coming off of there. Here the cell grows a swelling on its surface, which is the bud, uh, which then becomes a separate cell. So this is eventually gonna pop off and become its own individual. Uh, so, you know, and this is showing a bunch of um, yeast together and these buds, which, you know, have now become their own individuals. So this is showing uh, what are known as uh, pseudohyphae. This is a chain of yeast cells in which the buds remain attached in a row. So you can see we just got a row there. Um, so uh, I do want to point out hyphae. These are found, what are found with molds. Uh, these are long thread-like cells found in filamentous fungi, so molds. Uh, there are two types. There's um, uh, septated hyphae, which is what we see here on the left side. Uh, they have separations in their filaments. And then non-septated hyphae, uh, in which there are no separation in those filaments. Uh, some are dimorphic. Uh, this is a fungus can either be a yeast cell or in the hyphae form. Uh, so mycosis is are uh, fungal infections. So they can have a primary pathogen, so they can sicken even healthy individuals, uh, or they can be an opportunistic pathogen, so they attack individuals uh, who are already weakened in some way. If you look at nutrition with fungi, all fungi are heterotrophic. So some of them are saprobes, is an, uh, so they're gonna obtain nutrients from dead plants or uh, animals, so this is typically in soil or aquatic habitats, uh, or they can be, so that's what most of them that we, you know, you're walking along, you see some fungus growing off of a, a dead tree, that's a sapro. Uh, and then others are parasites, uh, so they're, they're going to obtain their nutrients from live plants or animals. Uh, so in terms of relationship, few of these guys are actually parasitic. Uh, so what happens here is the fungus actually penetrates into the substrate. Uh, and it's going to secrete enzymes that break down that substrate into smaller molecules and absorb the nutrients. So, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, us, we ingest uh, our nutrients, we release enzymes to break them down within us, and we absorb the nutrients that way. If I was a fungus and there was a, a bowl of jello here, I would stick my fingers into the bowl of jello, release enzymes that way into the jello, and absorb the nutrients that way and go, hmm, this is really good jello. Anyway. So next is a morphology of the fungus. Uh, they grow in loose associations or colonies. Uh, and so they have mycelium, which is, you know, what kind of this is all together. This is a densely branched network of hyphae in a fungus, uh, and they can appear uh, uh, cottony or hairy in their appearance. So some hyphae are vegetative hyphae. Uh, that's a visible mass of growth. This penetrates into the substrate to digest and absorb the nutrients. And the other is reproductive hyphae, uh, and this produces the fungal reproduction bodies, the spores. So like if you see a mushroom, that's a reproductive hyphae. Um, all right, so let's look at reproduction. Uh, one is fragmentation. Here a piece of the mycelium generates a whole new colony, uh, and this is a form of asexual reproduction, reproduction without the gate. So we just chop a piece of off and it can grow on its own. The other is uh, asexual spore formation. So uh, this is showing this uh, process here. So we have sporangia spores. Uh, these are spores produced from a sac-like head, which is known as sporangia. So those are sporangia spores. Uh, and then the other are condidiospores, uh, and these are free spores not contained by a spore-producing sac. So there's nothing surrounding them there. All right. So they form by pinching off the tip of the hyphae. So just pieces of there come off. Okay. Uh, sexual spore formation. This occurs by the fusion of compatible hyphae. These hyphae combine and form the fruiting body. Uh, then the fruiting body produces spores. And that's actually what you see. The favorite you see a mushroom, that's where a fungus is reproducing. So it's, uh, that's the fruiting body, and it's producing the spores underneath it.
All right, let's switch topics and talk about parasitic worms. Um, so looking at types of worms, most worms of both groups are free living. So uh, I don't wanna say uh, the two groups of that we're gonna look at are all parasites, they're not. So first are helmets, these are these flat worms. So look, all these are flat worms right here. So uh, this is a tapeworm, this is a fluke. Um, so all these guys are, are flat, they have very thin uh, segmented bodies. Next are nematodes. Oh, so this is another flatworm here. Uh, so this is showing nematodes here. Uh, nematodes are roundworms. Uh, they have elongated cylindrical unsegmented bodies. Uh, they also have a protective cuticle around them. Uh, morphology here, uh, they are multicellular with organs and organ systems. Parasitic worms have a reduction in the complexity of the organs, uh, especially like of the digestive system, excretory system, nervous and muscular systems. And the reason is they are going to rely on the host for a lot of that stuff. They don't need a complex digestive system if they're absorbing uh, nutrients that the host cell has already broken down. Uh, reproduction, nematodes uh, have separate sexes. Here's a female, there's the male on the nematode. Uh, flukes, we go back to a fluke, this is a fluke there. Uh, they can either have separate sexes or be hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female gametes. Uh, tapeworms are hermaphroditic. Uh, if we look at the life cycle, uh, let's go to um, uh, this picture here. So this is shown of a fluke. So a complete life cycle includes a fertilized egg, embryo, larval, and adult stages. Adults derive nutrients and reproduce sexually in a host body. Uh, most have a complex life cycle in that they have a definitive host. So like here, the human host here is a definitive host. This is a host in which the uh, adulthood and mating occurs. And the parasite releases eggs into uh, an intermediate host. So here, uh, the eggs are released and then taken up by the snail host, which is the intermediate host. This is a host in which the larval development occurs. So development occurs and this motile larval uh, goes back into the adult. So sometimes you can have a transport host. This is an intermediate host that experiences no parasitic development, but is essential in the life cycle. Okay, so some of these guys, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of one here, um, but you know, the snail, uh, you know, can grow up, uh, move up here, it's eaten by a bird, and then that bird gets eaten by uh, another predator, and then that predator poops, comes out the larval stage, and so that's just an, an extra host in the process.